What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a look at Enshrouded, a survival action RPG that launched into early access yesterday from the time of this video, though it first caught my attention when I checked out a demo of it during one of the Steam Next Fests last year and had a good bit of fun with it, and already it's come quite a way since that demo, and I think it's doing some fun things worth talking about. For starters, it is blending the typical survival and base building mechanics that are becoming relatively common with more traditional RPG elements such as action combat, skill trees, quests even, Though if you want something easy to compare it to, I would say Valheim would probably be pretty close. But let's dive into it a bit. Enshrouded takes place in the realm of Embervale, where humanity and another race known as the Ancients have all but gone extinct. This came about as the result of a war over a substance called the Elixir, or effectively magic, best I can tell, but this ultimately resulted in the fog, or the shroud. It blanketed the land, wiped out most everyone, and mutated what was inside of it, resulting in hideous monstrosities and pretty much what you can see on screen here. That said, the ancients and humanity devised a plan to hopefully allow their race to continue. This is the Flameborn, or more specifically you, people who are kept in stasis until an opportune time arose to, of course, awaken you. So when the game starts, after a quick browse through a cosmetic character creation that is a little bit limited, they kick you out into the world with essentially nothing and you have to build and craft your way through tiers of equipment, of course, things like weapons and armor, but also more practical things like a place to stay, a roof over your head, as you begin the quest to find other people who are also in stasis, which is where some of your quests come in. The first person you'll go find is a blacksmith who's going to enable you to actually work some metal, get some better armor and weapons on you, as you might imagine, before you start tackling the problem of the shroud a little more directly, which involves the action combat system that can see you wielding magic via staves and wands, traditional heavy melee approaches, something more light on your feet like an archer, all of which is augmented by a skill system. As you're doing all of this, you'll be leveling up and you'll be able to spend some skill points on a few different archetypes that lean into a certain play style, all giving you benefits and options you might not normally have. And eventually you'll be taking this fight directly to the shroud itself via the elixir wells, basically the mines that humans were pulling elixir out of the ground with. These are usually guarded by guardians, that you'll have to fight and take on, both to get rid of the fog in the area by disrupting the shroud route here, which will typically reward you with a soul core that can then be used to strengthen the flame that makes up the heart of your own base, allowing you, of course, to build and upgrade even farther. Now, when it comes to the base building side of things, it's, I would say, pretty standard fare for the most part, with a couple of unique things. For starters, the game allows you to kind of customize exactly the size and layout of the various materials you'll be working with. So most things you can find around, such as through mining or hacking down trees, etc., can then be turned into blocks, and you can spend this raw material to customize a shape pretty much any way you please by running through these presets, everything down to a basic tiny square or something more prefabricated to help you build faster. But it's an incredibly easy system to jump into because it's pretty intuitive, but also allows a ton of freedom in exactly how you'd like to build something because you can get so granular with exactly the size you want individual materials and things like that. And it's got everything from your more standard decorative stuff to more practical things like a fire and a bed for you to sleep through the night in, cook the meals that are going to heal you, but then also once you get a hold of the blacksmith you can start crafting armor and things, and that's to say nothing of the other survivors you can go on to pick up. Overall, it's a pretty satisfying gameplay loop that I've experienced, but then we have the actual combat system. Now, depending on how you're approaching it, this will change a bit, of course. A lot of that coming down to your weapons and your approach itself, as stealth is very much so an option in this title. But you can also use things like bows, two-handed weapons, sword and shield, a wand or a staff, which will give you some mage options, and that's before you start factoring in the skills to it. And while combat is, I would say, 
relatively straightforward. It does also offer some fun ways to play around with movement via a grapple hook and a glider. Once you get those under your belt, there will be grapple points out in the game that you can use to get around easier, and gliding is going to help you traverse things. But what I especially love about the exploration of this game is that once you have things like your pickaxe and your axe, etc., you can just kind of make your way through individual bits of terrain rather than trying to go around it. So for instance, once you have a pickaxe, you can actually just mine your way through basically any material that you see. This is a little bit limited by your stamina, but if you've got the patience for it, you can absolutely just kind of drill your way through things. And the fun thing about that to me is especially when you start looking at mining, because when you're looking for specific materials, say you want to build a roof out of flintstone, you'll find flintstone out in the world, and you can actually dig into it like it is a proper mine, creating a bit of a cavern as you go. And in fact, you can even find some pre-existing mines where the concept is pretty much the same. So you take all of that, combine it with the fact that you can have up to a 16-player co-op if you want to. Not to mention all the systems I didn't touch on, like, say, farming, weapon upgrades, etc. And you've got a game that has a lot going on, and it shows a ton of promise even early on here in Early Access. And I can say that so far, I've enjoyed it a lot. And because of that, it is a game that I will continue to keep my eye on until its full release, which is why I'm sharing it with everyone today. So... As for some things to watch out for, however, as it is early access, they unsurprisingly had some problems with the multiplayer lobbies on day one. That's pretty much par for the course for every early access game I've ever seen. And then there's simply the fact that it's early access. Now, the current state of this game, or what is available if you were to pick it up, is that they consider the core gameplay to be complete. What they plan on adding over the period of early access is things like new biomes, which comes with new crafting resources, recipes, and thus tiers of equipment and weapons, and then of course just more ways to build and customize your base. So there's a fair bit of content already here, and I think it'll be interesting to see how this one evolves over the course of it, because again, I just had a lot of fun playing it already. As for me, mixing their very freeform approach to how you interact with terrain, such as being able to just kind of mine your way through it in some cases, including things like pre-made buildings, etc. makes for a lot of interesting gameplay around attacking enemies, letting you have a pretty, I would say, free-form approach to how you approach any individual situation, such as a camp full of enemies which was a ton of fun to play around with. But that's pretty much everything I've got to say on this particular title. It's a game I'll be keeping an eye on, and I'll likely cover any big major updates they drop, and then of course when it actually releases, I'll take a look at reviewing it. But until then, that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Let me know down below how you feel about this one. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom, and have an amazing day.